I would like to introduce you to Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services that today offers a broad range of integration capabilities including data integration that provides you with the ability to synchronize, transform, and orchestrate data exchanges between applications and other targets such as data warehouses. Integration Hub that provides you with the ability to exchange data between applications and data sources using a publication to subscribe subscription based approach to accommodate the need of applications that need to consume data at specific times and format. Integration Hub helps organizations eliminate point to point integration. B2B Gateway provides you with the ability to transact with your partners leveraging EDI, HL7, and other vertical application protocols. Most importantly, B2B Gateway helps you manage your partner interactions. And finally, for today's recording, API and application integration provides you with API-first integration capabilities. API and application integration addresses real-time data propagation needs, such as integrating API-based applications in real-time via APIs and messaging. It provides you interactive access to data to users and their applications via API-enabled services and data sources, so that you don't have to move the data to be able to consume it. API and application integration provides you the ability to create and manage APIs. It allows you to create composite services and data APIs that you expose as REST, SOAP, or OData services to your lines of businesses, partners, or applications. And to provide you with the ability and control over your APIs, API management capabilities are embedded. And the third capability of API and application integration is process automation, which provides you the ability to manage business processes that span applications, in cloud, and on-premises. With application integration, you deploy processes and their associated APIs in the cloud or on-premises to meet the needs of your customers, partners, and lines of businesses wherever they are. We operate a multi-tenant service for our customers that includes the cloud process service and the API gateway service for cloud-based integrations. For on-premises deployments and connectivity, customers install a secure agent on which process server runs to orchestrate on-premises applications, data, and APIs. As is the case for cloud, on-premise uh, processes can be exposed as APIs. In the demonstration that follows, API and application integration components of the Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services are used to process and fulfill orders. Let's get started with the demo. The demonstration ties together API management functions of the IICS in Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services and cloud application integration. I'm going to show it from the perspective of Atlas Auto Parts, who's offering the ability for customers to order parts from its website, but also for retailers uh, whose websites and applications can order parts through uh, from Atlas via the APIs that it exposes. So let's go to the website. John, a customer, signs in to the website and starts searching for a fuzzy dice for his 1972 Vega. Finds the part, the SKU is INT1782, it's $12, and added to the cart. As and when uh, John finishes his order, he will actually place the order that he's created by going to the cart. This website will initiate an API call, so the APIs will be, Atlas is created on ICS, but it will do so first through the API gateway. Now the API gateway is there to be able to monitor, secure, access to the APIs and the data that Atlas is exposing to its partners in its website. So let's switch to Roger. Roger is the Atlas API administrator and he's going to use API Manager to track access to these websites. So Roger goes to ICS and logs in. Goes to API Manager. 
and first looks at the list of managed PIs that they've exposed. Roger knows that he's using the expedited purchase API, the process, which uh, to offer the service to the website. Now you'll notice here that the uh, API policy of write five requests per 30 seconds is in place. Let's have a look. We can look at the API details. There's the endpoint that is used by the website and the rate limits that have been applied to make sure that the website is not overwhelmed by request. Now to get visibility over the APIs that are may be made by, uh, by the website and retailers for that matter, you can go to his analytics dashboard, look activity that might happen over the last 30 days. You'll notice it's fairly light, things happen over the weekends. And the top APIs are get parts, look invoice and customer details, order processor, and expedited purchase, which is the API that we were looking at. If you want to have access to activity, go to the activity log, and you can see the set of activities that happens with, uh, for each of these APIs. There might be some security related issues in terms of uh, call API calls that exceed policies like too many requests. Then we can also go, go back a few days, show the logs, and then we'll see there are a lot more of these too many requests, essentially requests of API calls that exceed the limits. We even have one here which is unauthorized. So Roger uses API Manager to be able to track access, to be able to put under management a set of services, and to manage organizational policies such as the default rate limit policy or IP filtering policies to control um, which sites or which are allowed or those that are denied. Now, these APIs need to be, uh, to be monitored, not just from a perspective of how they're called, but how they function. So emit is in, the, is in IT operations, goes to application integration console to monitor the activities of the processes, the services, the APIs that are being invoked. You'll note as we're talking, API calls are being made from the website at all, all the time. I have a bit of a lull here, nothing's really happening, but let's go have a look at expedited purchase, which is what we just what was just invoked from the website. So the, the, the instance, here we have the implementation of an API, which is really just an orchestration that accepts orders for product SKU of N 1782. That's what John just submitted on, on, the, on the website. And then when he placed order, he ordered one part, uh, a unit, uh, one fuzzy dice. The website actually suggested a 10% discount because John, John Snow, is a repeat customer. And he also provided his telephone number. Maybe it changes at that from time to time. The console that Emit uses can be used to determine how much time is being st uh, spent in every step. And that's useful to be able to determine if there's services that have gone slow. Now, what else do we see here? We see access to uh, a, um, an opportunity uh, call to Salesforce. So this is used in, by Atlas to record in Salesforce opportunities that have been created for every time there's somebody visiting the website. And now the heavy lifting uh, starts, which is the fulfillment process. Through the console, we drill in through the fulfillment process, and now we see the implementation of that process, that service. Now let's just go back to this star list to see that really what happened here is the expedited purchase process, call fulfillment process, and as, as we observe and as we find out more about the execution of, the system, of these, these services, you'll see that they call each other. Anyways, let's go back to fulfillment. So fulfillment, what it does, uh, as a first step, is to determine whether the discount that was suggested by the website of 10% is appropriate. So we this makes a call to a service, to the verified, the verified discount uh, business rule service, that makes a determination. 
you send in 10%, and we got auto-approved. So the, the rule then is, if it's auto-approved, we go up the top branch. Otherwise, if it wasn't approved, we'd send a, an email rejection to the manager and probably John Snow to inform him that there's a problem with the place of the order that he's been placing. When you think about parts, uh, that may, the, the price and availability doesn't change very much. Well, it's appropriate to store this information in your CRM, Salesforce in this particular case, and use data integration to keep Salesforce up to date on an hourly or daily basis of the uh, inventory and pricing information. Now, there are certain parts that just fly off the shelf, like fuzzy dices for 1972 Vega. So that type of information is actually stored in an inventory database. And then what we do in the inventory database and what we do in this process is actually do a live lookup to the inventory database to determine what the current price and availability of, of fuzzy dice is. So all parts that are of type INT, MIS, EXT, POW, M returns as the outcome is the pricing information and the availability of these fuzzy dice. Next, we go to, we prepare shipping details. We go to Salesforce. We collect information in terms of the address that John Snow would have already provided to us, the parts information. We update Salesforce with a tracking ID number because we're about to place an order. And then we're going to do one of three things. Actually, we do all three things. In parallel, we will send a notification that we're going to be shipping parts uh, to the address that we obtain from Salesforce. We are actually going to publish in Cloud Integration Hub via an API an order, and that order information is going to be used to send to subscribers, which is one of them is NetSuite, which will receive order information of, uh, every hour that are being placed to be able to do the actual fulfillment. A second subscriber to Cloud Integration Hub is going to be a Redshift uh, cloud database to be used to drive, for example, a Tableau dashboard to look at orders for this day, this week, and, and the like. And now, uh, the other thing that we will do is actually place to, uh, into, into a back-end system, which we interoperate with a uh, messaging topic. So we're using AMQP, for example, where we're going to put on the messaging topic uh, an, uh, the, the evidence of an order so that our back-end systems may actually start initiate the, the delivery process. Now these processes, the fulfillment process, is implemented by a developer. So what tool did he use? Well, Amit, or Ravi rather, and he uses application integration to build these processes, which ultimately will be exposed as APIs. So he's created a project called Expedited Purchasing, He's created some connections and some mappings, and we've got service connectors that provide ability to integrate any SOAP service or REST service that exists, plus in addition to the connectors that Informatica provides. And he's created some processes. Again, we click through, we look at the fulfillment process. In this specific case, what we want to be able to do is Ravi uh, has been told that we need to do an improvement on, on, to, on the website. So not only should you be able to initiate the order, but you should be able to track the order. You should be able to cancel the order and should perhaps even be able to update the order. So Ravi used Cloud Application Integration to create a new order service, the order processor service, that is actually going to be called by the fulfillment process to support the ability to uh, initiate the order, to be able to, as this path suggests, update the order, check status over the order, or cancel the order. And this is a capability that is very that is unique to Informatica, because what it allows you to do is to host a long-running process, this order process, which could be running for days. Uh, to and allow you to interact with it by sending it messages. The messages might be, for example, check the status. Let's add this order processing service to the existing fulfillment process. 
doing so is as simple as dra dropping either a subprocess where we're just going to embed the code. We're going to make a call to this service as a process, and we're going to invoke the order processing service, which is a pro is stored in the processes of this. And then we're going to call the start action. You'll notice there are other actions. Cancel order, check status, update order. First, we're going to start it. We already know that init item name and item count are uh, required fields. So let's map them. We've already told you they're required. So we do two things. It allows you to set the fields. And then when John places order, we provided to the website, the SKU came in as product SKU. The order count, the number of dices that were ordered, come in as unit count. That's all that's required to map from prior steps in the process, information necessary to be able to place this order. We save it. It was successful. We publish it. The act of publishing is an act of deploying the service. Now the service has been updated. So the fulfillment process, the next time it's called, will start acting with this new definition. Now, not only do we want to make this process improvement of adding ability to update, track, cancel, and get status on orders, but we also want to make it available to our partners, you know, the retailers that are pl uh, placing orders through this website. So Roger, who is our API administrator, has been told by Ravi, I'd like to put this service under management. Ravi switched over to API manager or asks Roger to do that. In the list of all services, he searches for the order processor, which we'll find here. We'll create and manage API. Icon has changed. Let's have a look at the list of managed APIs. Now from the list of managed APIs, we now have a new one, order processor. So just creating a managed API is all you need. Let's view the API details. Let's set a rate limit of two per 30 seconds. Update. Close. And that was all that was required to put a process a service under management and start monitoring it and putting a rate limit on it. Let's look at copy the managed URL the one that we just created and let's invoke that URL. Copy that. I've done it before so I'm going to type in item name 1782 item count press enter and we receive the order. Now I can use this order ID to cancel it, but I think by now you realize that we were able to call that API. If we go to our overview, our activity log, we now see evidence of this new API call that just ran, ran the first time, it took 111 milliseconds. Uh, we've created uh, new sets of capabilities that provide customers with the ability to not only to to enter data integration between various systems but to automate processes to expose these processes these integrations as api to be put in them under management be able to track the, the execution of these uh, these apis and these systems and be able to deliver significant new value to um, atlas auto parts and with that thank you for this opportunity to I'll tell this story on behalf of the team.